Thank you very much. Please be seated. To the members of the Whitaker family, Secretary West, General Davis, General Gordon, General Griffith, Senator Hollings, Senator Thurman, Congressman Spratt and Clyburn, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to all of you. Today is a good day for the United States. Today we honor the memory of a great American, Johnson Chestnut Whitaker. Born into slavery, he was appointed to West Point in 1876 at the age of 17. Life at West Point was harsh for all cadets, but for the few African Americans like Johnson Whitaker, it was doubly difficult. He was ostracized by his white peers. Few spoke to him except to issue orders and commands. From the beginning, the odds were against him. Then in April of 1980, Johnson Whitaker was assaulted in his barracks. Three masked men tied him to his bed and left him battered, bleeding, and unconscious. His superiors charged that Whitaker had mutilated himself and faked unconsciousness to gain attention. After a lengthy court martial, he was convicted and sentenced to dismissal from the Army. The court martial was overturned by President Chester Arthur. But on that very day, the Secretary of War dismissed Johnson Whitaker from West Point. The grounds for dismissal? He had allegedly failed an oral examination in philosophy. Johnson Whitaker was a rare individual, a pathfinder, a man who, through courage, example, and perseverance, paved the way for future generations of African-American military leaders. General Chappie James, Lieutenant General Benjamin O. Davis, who is with us today, General Colin Powell, and so many others. In part because Whitaker and others like him took those first brave steps, America's armed forces today serve as a model for equal opportunity to our entire country and indeed to the world. Johnson Whitaker did more than open doors in our military. He left to his descendants a remarkable legacy of determination and a sense of duty. Two of his sons served as army officers during World War I. One returned home and served the citizens of his state as president of South Carolina State University. A grandson flew with the famed Tuskegee Airmen during the Second World War. His granddaughter, Cecil Whitaker Paquette, who is here with us today, gave voice to her community as a founder of the Detroit Tribune. And today his great-grandsons, one a lawyer, the other a surgeon, also carry on the Whitaker tradition. During his four years at West Point, Cadet Whitaker found his greatest source of comfort and strength in the Bible. Today, fading words on the inside cover of that fragile volume reveal a young man whose essential goodness still offers a lesson to all of us. Try never to injure another by word, by act, or by look even, he wrote in his second year at the academy. Forgive as soon as you are injured and forget as soon as you forgive. On the following New Year's Day, Johnson Whitaker resolved and wrote in his Bible, never to commit an act at which my kind mother would have to blush, to do right at all times under whatever circumstances and at whatever cost. We cannot undo history, but today, finally, we can pay tribute to a great American, and we can acknowledge a great injustice. I would like to do two things today. First, to present to Mrs. Cecil Whitaker Paquette what may have been her grandfather's most prized possession, that old Bible that soothed his loneliness and was confiscated and kept all these years as a part of his court-martial record. And second, I am honored to present the Whitaker family with the bars that 2nd Lieutenant Johnson Chestnut Whitaker earned but was denied. May God bless his memory, and may all of us honor his service to the United States of America. Major, please read the commission. Yes, sir. In recognition of Lieutenant Whitaker, I ask that you please stand.
the President of the United States of America, to all who shall see these presents, greeting. Know that in recognition and acknowledgement of the patriotism, valor, and fidelity of Johnson Chestnut Whitaker, I do appoint him Second Lieutenant in the United States Army, to rank as such from the fifth day of April, 1995. This commission is to continue in force during the pleasure of the President of the United States of America under the provision of those public laws relating to the armed forces of the United States of America and the component in which this appointment is made. Signed, Bill Clinton, President of the United States, Togo West, Secretary of Army. down it's a happy day and I wish to say that in spite of all the turmoil that is facing the president and the members of Congress in America today all around the world and it is pressing that for them to stop and bestow this great honor I want to say thank you to Mr. President to the members of Congress who were instrumental in it and to the whole country. It keeps our faith in America strong, and this country will be strong as long as families continue to be families and achieve and grow like ours, and as long as we have people in office, people who are working with the government, who carry on such tradition. Thank you all.